morning all. <clears throat> all of you who are in the Lord's house and those of you who are following online, greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I would like to start this morning. There is a lot to share this morning, so please bear with me. Um, you know it is my heart's desire always to share just something from the scripture and so I would like to read then from Psalm 130 this morning out of the depths I cry to you O Lord O Lord hear my voice let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy if you O Lord kept a record of sins O Lord who could stand but with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. The psalmist cried out from the depths of his very being. And he says, Lord, hear my voice. And the Lord hears our voice when we cry out to him. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and always. So we can trust him. Our sins are forgiven. We have peace with him. If he was to mark one iniquity, who of us would be able to stand before him? Not one of us. What the law was unable to do in that we weakened by the sinful nature, God did himself by sending his son, Jesus Christ, who bore the full penalty for our sins. We are made righteous because of him, clothed in his righteousness alone. Like the psalmist trusted in his unfailing word. That's where his hope was. Our hope is in the same God, the same word, the unchanging word of an unchanging God. The Lord Jesus Christ is our hope. He is the anchor for our soul. The psalmist said he was waiting for the Lord, waiting on the Lord. His soul waits for him as the watchman waits for the morning. He had a longing. Do we have that same longing for the Lord's return and into his kingdom? Sharing in glory with him. Are we thankful for God's unfailing love? Do we express that thanks not just with our words, up with the way that we live and move and have our very being. Are you thankful for the redemption? We have been purchased by the precious blood of Christ. And it is a full redemption. We don't have to add to it. So we are so thankful that what God has done, we can return our thanks unto him. So let's continue to hold on to the hope <clears throat> that we have in Jesus, our Saviour, God's Son. In him we are firm and secure. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to share some of the announcements this morning. There are many of them. We welcome 
Then amongst us this morning, Richard and Anna Reimer, who will be sharing with us. So let's give an attentive ear to their words as well. Thankful that they are here with us this morning. Also, Pastor John will be sharing a word with us this morning. And so let's be attentive, not just to hear John's voice, but to hear the Lord speaking to us through John and through his eternal word. Some of the announcements, you know that, or many of you know, that each Wednesday, 10 o'clock, you can have a lovely cup of coffee here and share it and share conversation with Pastor John, Pastor Rob, and with other people. And it's not just restricted to men only. So that's Wednesday. This Wednesday also, with Wednesday coming at 7 p.m., there will be a Bible study here at the church led by Pastor John. And then Thursday, the 20th, is blanket making. All ladies are welcome to that. Then we move on to the 23rd, next Sunday, there will be a potluck lunch for Thanksgiving. The sign-up sheet is still in the foyer, so if you haven't uh, put anything on there and you want to, please do so at the end of the meeting. Uh, there will also be photos taken at the same time for the church directory and you will be notified about that. <clears throat> There's a, a gospel echo banquet, banquet at the New Bothwell Summerfeld Church on uh, Tuesday, October the 25th. If you want to go along to that, then the, the name is Anita and the number is in the bulletin for you to reserve a spot for that. October the 24th, next Monday, the Sunshine Ladies will be meeting here at 6.30 and once again, all ladies are welcome. And then further notice, advance notice of a child and parent dedication on October the 30th and I'm sure more information will be coming about that possibly next week. Uh, lost and found, the items have been left behind and I notice on the table there's not many of them left so some of you have claimed them. Those that are left then will be going as a donation. There is still an opening here uh, to join the audio-visual team. They still need somebody there so if the Lord will have you to be involved in that then please speak to Jamie, uh, Jamie Martins. I'd like to call on uh, Pastor Rob at this moment who would like also to make an announcement. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat> um, just want to make, uh, well, good morning, first of all. I uh, want to make an announcement uh, and just a reminder um, next Sunday, October 23rd, uh, before the message starts, we're going to be launching our partnership with Right Now Media. That basically means that we're going to be sharing access to Right Now Media with all of you, with everybody, at no cost. What is Right Now Media? Right Now Media is an online streaming platform of over 20,000 Christian resources, ranging from cartoons for kids to Bible studies. For adults, this is something that we as the church leadership are extremely excited to be able to put into your hands as a tool for spiritual growth, uh, but also as an aid to your, uh, to your life groups to help you study. So once again, next Sunday is the day, uh, October 23rd. I'm going to be showing this to you. I'm going to be walking through it with you and giving you a quick demonstration uh, of just what it is, how it works, how simple it is. To use, I'm fairly confident that all of you could use it with ease. Even all of those who think that you're 
um, bad with technology, this is very simple. And I think with a little bit of help that you'll master it very quickly. I think anybody could get the hang of it. And I'm also willing to help. If it's something that maybe you don't, you, you watch it and you don't understand how it works and you want some help, I'm also willing to help you guys figure that out. So, so don't be afraid, don't be intimidated by it. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful resource and a great tool. And so if you're interested in that, uh, then please be here next Sunday when we, uh, when we start that off. And uh, I'll give you that demonstration. So thank you. Okay, let's, let's pray. Father, it is a privilege to come before you. And we know that the only way we can come is in the name and the merits of your dear Son, our blessed Lord and Saviour and Redeemer. And we come to worship you and thank you for all that you have done, thanking you as well that you are the anchor for our soul. You are the one who gives us a hope a hope which is sure and certain. And so we come and we praise you and thank you for all your goodness and kindness to us, for the knowledge of sins forgiven and peace with you, our Father in heaven, for the one who has made all of this possible, your dearly beloved Son, the one in whom you are well pleased and we also are well pleased. We thank you for the privilege that we have to come to you, Father. We thank you for your word which you have given to us and secured for us. We're thankful for the transforming power of your word. May it enter our minds and our hearts this day, penetrating deep into our very being and transforming us more and more into the image of Jesus, your Son, our Saviour. We're thankful, Lord, that you are the one who hears our prayers. You are always attentive to our cry, no matter how that cry comes unto you. There are those, O oh Lord, in this fellowship that have been laid aside for a long time, with ongoing sickness. Lord, those in great need of help, and you are the one who is an ever-present help in the time of trouble and need. And so we are so thankful that we can bring these people before you, either privately or corporately. And so, Lord, we would pray for those who are lonely, for those who are sick, for those who are suffering, for those who are enduring challenges in their life of varied natures. You are the answer to all of these. And you, Lord Jesus, are our peace in each and every situation. And so, O oh Lord, we commit then this morning and everything that will happen today, Lord, may it be down to your honour and to your glory. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you accept our praises and our worship of you, our Saviour. Be with us throughout this meeting and receive all the honour and all the glory due to your wonderful name. Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome here. It's so good to see all you guys. Oh, man, church is so full today. It's awesome. Please join us as we sing a few uh, songs.
That sounded so, so good. It gave me shivers up here. I loved it hearing the songs you guys are singing. Ah, just, it, I know it brings a smile to our Heavenly Father's face. It's awesome. As Rick, uh, a couple uh, what was it? A couple years ago, somebody asked me what, what my name was. I introduced myself as Richard, and uh, that is my name. My name is Richard. I've always signed Richard as long as I've ever signed my name. And uh, okay, then they said, "Okay, we're calling you Richard from now on." So it's uh, kind of going along that pathway. It's like I know I still answer to Rick and. To a lot of people, I'll always be Rick, and I'm okay with that. So. And I'm Anna. Just yeah. Street. There we go. And for the past 17 and a half years, we lived and served at Camp Cedarwood with Youth for Christ. Uh, this summer, we moved to Winkler area, and now we're serving at Winkler Bible Camp. My position is the operations director which is the same as position I had at Camp Cedarwood. Although it looks different at Winkler Bible Camp because the camp is so much bigger and it's set up very differently. Uh, one of the things that's different is Winkler Bible Camp does preschool till age 14, whereas Camp Cedarwood took kids on from grade five, six-ish till grade 12. So reaching different age kids is a lot different. I know I'm not part of the, the ministry in that sense, but creating the environment where ministry can happen is more of what I do. Some of the projects we're working on right now are reshingling 13 more cabins, which uh, yesterday we shingled four cabins with a group of volunteers. It was really cool being part of uh, that and seeing others that are wanting to serve and to volunteer in places like that. Pouring a cement pad we did last week as well in front of House 7, winterizing. It's getting colder out there, so we have to get ready for, for that. Uh, there's a lot of the cabins don't have heat in them. They have enough heat to have a baseboard, baseboard heater for uh, spring and fall, but not enough to keep through the winter, so they have to do quite a bit of winterizing for that. We're also converting uh, the former dining hall into more of a rental space. Uh, we're also trenching for Christmas Glow. It's a, it's a drive-through fundraiser that they do, and they've uh, kind of drive throughout the whole property and have displays on the way, a nativity scene, and they just share the, the gospel that way. That's a little bit of what's going on. Okay, my turn. <laughs> so, as he already mentioned, uh, well, actually, I don't know if you mentioned when we moved. We moved end of May, early June, and so, um, but we didn't officially start at Winkler until August 1st was Richard's first day. And so we missed the first part of the summer, but... I asked one of the, the summer ministry director at Winkler Bible Camp if they could share some stories of things that have happened there this summer, just so we could share what kind of ministry looked like. And so he shared a few stories with us, so we're going to share those with you. So this past summer was filled with many wonderful opportunities for ministry. Um, although most of the kids that come to Winkler Bible Camp come from church families, 
not all of them do, but most do. This summer, there was one week uh, where five kids in one TP became Christians. So that's pretty cool, pretty great to hear. Winkler Bible Camp has both cabins and a TP village. So when kids come for summer camp, they can sign up for either. They can either rough it in TP village where there's like no running water and stuff, or they can be in a cabin closer to the lodge, go to the lodge every day for their lunches, and it's very different. So there was five boys in a cabin that all committed their lives to Christ, either first time or like rededicated, which was really exciting. And one of the moms of one of those boys emailed the camp later to say that her son was so different. And she was just so excited to see the change in his life and um, his growth. She said he grew so much in his faith from his week at camp and that she was very thankful for the great cabin leader that he had had. So that was one of the stories. Another is of a 10 year old boy. While sitting at one of the picnic tables, he shared his story of his dad's passing last year. And this young boy, he wanted to know if, if God truly loved him, if God cared about him, because his dad had passed. And so the staff person was able to share God's love and just pour into his heart and into his life and just assure him of God's love for him, which was beautiful. And the final story I'll share with you, or that we'll share with you, is about a girl who she grew tremendously in her walk with God while she was at, at camp. And her mom had shared on social media that she felt like her daughter had grown like five years, like just matured in her faith while being at camp. And her mom, this mom too, was just so thankful for the safe place that camp had provided for her daughter to grow. <clears throat> and her daughter now wants to grow up to be a camp leader one day. There were 1,800 campers this past summer filling camp to 99.2% capacity. Many kids had great questions about God. Although it was a difficult decision for us to move away from Camp Cedarwood, maybe a little bit emotional too. Yeah. We loved it there too. After being there for 17 years, 18 years. <clears throat> it was a great place to be. Not only a great place to be, a great mission, organization to serve with. If you guys, if somebody's looking for somewhere to serve, I'm sure that camp is looking for people. They are. Mm -hmm. uh, which camp is not looking for people? <laughs> True. We are excited and at peace with our move to Winkler. God is faithful and has led us here. We are excited about what he has planned in the future. Okay. Yes, like he said, it's, it's, been a good, it's been a good transition. It was a hard transition in, in many ways, but it has been good and God has been in it the whole way and he has led and um, we really do feel a lot of peace with having made the move. It was good for our family. Um, we are now, Caleb is now our eldest, or he's not now our eldest, he's always been the eldest. <laughs> <laughs> but Caleb now has recently gotten a job with an electrical company, and so he's getting into thinking that's a career path he would like to potentially follow through with and become an electrician. And he's, an enjoy, and he's enjoying his job, which is really good. And Richard loves his job. Um, we don't live on site, which is very different for our family. In the past, we always lived on site at Cedarwood. And so it was a little bit more like we were, as a family, all working there, where now it's like a little bit more like he's going off to work. Um, so it feels different in that way. And, um, but we're slowly getting to know the staff as there's fundraisers and stuff. We try to help with volunteering when they need to do like drive through fundraisers and things like that. So we're getting to know the staff a little bit and um, it'll go slower, but it'll come. So we're excited about that. And um, so I spend most of my days at home homeschooling the other three, Hadassah, Jeremiah and Ezra. 
and they're in grades 12, 10, and 8. And so it keeps us busy. Um, we're finding our place in the community. Uh, the kids are enjoying hockey. They love hockey, and so they do that usually once a week at the homeschool hockey um, in Winkler. And so, yeah, so that part is Kayla's. I'm sorry, I'm kind of ad living here. Okay, so that's a little bit about what we're doing at home. Uh, the other kids, Hadassah and Jeremiah, also got to be LDPs at Winkler Bible Camp this summer, which was really nice, and then Hadassah spent one week counseling. And Jeremiah, Hadassah, and Ezra all did a little bit of part-time work this summer for our landlords, who are wonderful people. We live south of Winkler. We're not in the city. We're 10 minutes south. Now, just a couple thank yous. We want to thank the church, the conference. The conference sent us to Kareth Pines last month. Yes, in September. He took July, we took July as a sabbatical month and weren't able to get in in July because they were booked up. So we went in September and it was just a week away for Richard and I and it was wonderful. We just unplugged, left the kids at home alone I was like, oh my goodness, they were fine. They were fine. They told their Sunday school teachers to pray for their mom. <laughs> so it, it was fine. It really went really good. We had a great time. It was a great week of um, well, relaxing, being quiet before God, and just, I think we both really felt like we grew in our own personal faith and just got rest to be more grounded and ready for what Winkler has for us there, what God has for us there. So we were able to go as a gift through the conference missions, and you guys are all a part of that. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It was really good for us. We'd never done something like that before. So it was really good, and I think it was a good experience for the kids too. Um, so that was huge. And also we just want to thank you for your love and prayers and support. We were at Cedarwood for many years, and... God carried us there. He was faithful all those years. And we know that we had your backing as well. And we appreciate that. And we thank you for that. And we thank you that you still stand behind us, even though we have changed camps. It's all still part of God's ministry. It doesn't really matter which camp you work at. If it's for Jesus, it's all for one, right? So thank you all for that. And God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for sharing. Uh, I've uh, actually kno known them for quite a long time. Uh, not really well, but uh, got to know them. Um, Rick, as he used to be known, uh, was a camp counselor at uh, Rosa River when we used to go there for family camp. And he'd have a whole bunch of kids hanging on to one leg, or to both legs, and then he'd walk around like this with the, with the kids dragging on. So he's worked at camp actually since he was very young. And so, thanks for sharing. And again, it's good to hear, you know, that when we give, uh, it, it's part of a bigger picture. It's not just what we do here. There's, a, there's actually things happening all over the place. Like, like, uh, like the Rhymers working at, uh, at, at uh, Gimli Bible Camp. Pardon me, not Gimli, uh, Winkler Bible Camp. So today we are going to go to Acts chapter 17. Uh, Paul is in Acts chapter 17. Paul is on a second trip. Uh, Paul and Barnabas have left Antioch, uh, or on their first trip, they left Antioch because that um, the Holy Spirit had said, separate to me Paul and Barnabas uh, for a work that I want to use them for. So they left, went on this, on this huge journey, uh, and to first they went to the, the island of Cyprus and then to Asia and they preached and many people came to faith wherever they went they were persecuted along, they, they took along with them John Mark who, who was a young man uh, but he didn't stay with them 
I, it, it seems things got, got rough. He decided to go back. <clears throat> and then, sometime later, uh, Paul says to Barnabas, let's, uh, let's uh, go and strengthen the brethren, the people that have come to faith. Let's go visit them. And Paul, Barnabas says, yeah, let's go. We'll take John Mark along. And he said, Paul says, no, we're not going to take him along. He left us. And so there was a disagreement between the two. And so Barnabas did take John Mark and went to Cyprus again. And Paul um, chooses Silas to go with him. And as they go, they, they, they haven't gone very far on this trip. <clears throat> then they, they meet a young man by the name of, of Timothy. His mother was Jewish. His father's a Greek. And so this man joins Paul and Silas on their second trip. And later, Luke, the, the writer of the Gospel of Luke, also joins them. There were probably others, but I don't know that they're named. Paul had been planning on going more to the, towards the east, more into, into, into Asia. And it says, and the, and the Spirit didn't permit them. But it doesn't say what, what it was. Sometimes we, we change course. We, we're not quite sure what happened. It happens to, to missionaries, it happens to, to Richard and Anna, it happens to, to other people. That's what happened here. They weren't able to go where they wanted to go. So then uh, suddenly in a, in a vision, Paul sees a, a man from Macedonia who says, come and help us. And so that's where they go. <clears throat> and it is in, in, in Macedonia that they come to the city of Philippi where Lydia gets saved, her and her household, and then Paul drives out a, a demon out of a slave girl. And for that, he's put in prison. And, 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 and then that, uh, uh, that night, as they're singing praises to God, there's an earthquake. And before morning, the jailer has come to, the, to know the Lord. And him and his household get saved. And then <clears throat> they are released from prison. They're told they're released. They said, you're free to go. But we do want you to go. We don't want you to stay here. And so they head for Thessalonica. Uh, it's, it's in the vicinity. It, it's only... Uh, the, the whole area they're traveling is between 100 and, and 200 kilometers. And so that's where they leave. Or that's where they're... Uh, they, that's where we hit uh, them in, in, uh, in uh, Acts 17, starting at verse 10. And then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preached by Paul at, Barnab at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. And then immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea, but both Silas and Timothy remained there. So those who conducted Paul brought him to Athens, and receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him with all speed, they departed. So they, they can't stay terribly long in one place. They're, they're always being persecuted. And so I think he will have thought about the words that Jesus taught his followers when they were telling him, when Jesus was talking about things to come. Like in, in, in Matthew chapter 10, uh, 22 and 23, Jesus says, uh, and you will be hated for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. And when they persecute you in the city, flee to another. For assuredly I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. So Paul isn't really running away because he's afraid. <clears throat> uh, Paul is not a, a, a fearful person. But the Holy Spirit is leading, and he's leading him in, into many different areas to, to preach the good news. And, and Paul is not even angry at the Jews, it seems. I can't imagine not being so angry that you would say, I'll, I'll never talk to another Jew. But that's not, that's not, that's not Paul. He, whenever he comes to a new place, 
He goes to the synagogue. The synagogue is where the Jews meet. And so he, he also, Paul also knows what, what Jesus said, uh, like in, in 28 to 33, he says, uh, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? But the very hairs of your heart, head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also co confess before my Father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. I think we can understand Paul has, a, has an, an excellent attitude. He's not afraid to preach the truth, but he, he preaches out of love for his brothers, for his brethren, the Jews. But he always includes everybody else as well. So here in Berea, that's only about, about 50 kilometers west of Thessalonica, they're open, when Paul comes, they're open to listening, to hear what he has to say. Some people like to hear new things. And others think that nothing, if it, if it isn't the, the same as it's always been, then it's no good. But these people in, in Berea understand their Bible. They read and understand their Bible. It's, it's their Old Testament, the, the law, the Psalms, and the prophets. From the law, they, they learn how to, how to live. It shows them what, what, is, what is sin. And, 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 and when, they, when they sin, then what kind of a sacrifice to bring? A, a goat or a bull or a lamb? In the Psalms and the prophets, their God has made promises that a Messiah is coming. A Christ is coming. And he's going to, he's going to set Israel free. It's going to be, he's going to redeem Israel. Actually, it says he's going to redeem the whole world. So the, the Jews are waiting for a Messiah. Most other people don't know that a, that a Messiah is coming. They have no idea. And now that the Messiah has come, and, and he's become that, that lamb, he was our sacrifice for sins. And then after he was raised from the dead, he has gone to heaven, and the Holy Spirit has come to indwell and lead believers. And so Paul tells them stuff like this. This is what Paul preaches to them. And so these Bereans, when they hear what Paul says, go back to their Old Testament and see exactly what the Psalms and the prophets have to say. What did they foretell? And when they find out that exactly what Paul is preaching, that's exactly what, what the prophets were talking about. So many believe. Not all, but many came to faith. And it, and it wasn't just Jews. It, it was also Greeks. And it wasn't just poor people. It, it, was, it was people who, who it, it says, were, were of... of, of uh, <clears throat> uh, they, they had made something out of themselves. They were prominent people, it said. Some people think and teach that only, only um, poor people can come to faith. I, I, I don't think... The Bible doesn't say that. In fact, God always talks about making us rich. It, it's an interesting concept that, that I, I heard someplace. But <clears throat> when, when God promised Israel the land of, of, of Canaan, he said, it's our land, it's a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Now, you know that there isn't a river in, in, in Israel that is flowing with milk or that is fl flowing with honey, literally. But milk is a rich food signifying something very rich. It's all that a baby needs to stay alive for the first part of its life. But while milk is rich, it must be used in the present because it, it spoils easily. So milk has to be used while it is rich, has to be used when it is be before it spoils. Honey, on the other hand, doesn't spoil. It is also a rich food. Doesn't spoil, so it's for long term and it adds sweetness. To the richness of the milk, it adds the sweetness. It's an interesting concept. But it, it talks about God. It, God is one who makes us rich. Jesus said, I came to give you life 
that you would have it more abundantly. So <clears throat> this thing about only poor people can come to faith, that's not true. Prominent people come to faith. <clears throat> it's just that money often does strange things to us. It makes people greedy. And so money can be a, 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 a scary thing. <clears throat> but, but it hadn't done that for the Bereans. They seem to be well-to-do. They're interested in truth. And when they hear Paul telling about the, the Son of God becoming our salvation, they search the scriptures to see, make sure that what Paul is saying is true. And then they come to faith. <clears throat> And then when the people from Thessalonica hear that Paul has gone to Berea and that the people believe what he says, they're, they're up in arms. They, they're frustrated. <clears throat> they wanted to put a stop to what Paul was doing. So they sent him away. What actually was happening was a little bit like what happens to a grass fire if it's a little bit windy. It jumps from one place to another. You try and put it out here and it jumps all over the place. That's what was ha happening with, with, with Paul and, and the Bereans. Uh, Silas and Timothy stay in Berea and Paul has to go to Athens because there was a, 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 another disturbance. They're coming for Paul and so they just send them away. They say, we have heard you. We believe. There's no need for you to stay here if they're, if they're coming for you. <clears throat> but when... <clears throat> But as soon as Paul gets to Athens, or very shortly after he gets to Athens, he calls for, for, um, <clears throat> for uh, Silas and Timothy to come and join him. Because he finds he's, he's come to a, a very ungodly place. <clears throat> when you are in such an, an evil place, it, it is, um, I think it's comforting to have, to have other believers around you. Verse 16, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. And therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace daily with those who, who happened to be there. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him, and some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, may we know what this new doctrine is of what you speak? For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as, <clears throat> as also some of your own prophets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of, of inf uh, misinformation or ignorance God overlooked, but now commends all men everywhere to repent. Therefore, he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance 
of this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. And so Paul departed from among them. However, some men joined him and believed, among them Dionysus, the Aeropagite, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. <clears throat> so just to be, <clears throat> it's good to be interested in new things. It's, it's good to, to search out new things. And it's good to be educated. People, we, we do need education. Um, a doctor needs to be educated. He doesn't become a doctor on his own. Uh, pastors need to be educated. They don't become pastors on their own. Farmers need education. They have to learn how to farm. They are near, it, nothing comes by itself. So here in Athens, the people are, ed, it seems they're educated, they're smart. But very few people know the creator God. The one from Genesis chapter 1 and 2. The Jews knew God, but somehow... They never shared that with the Greeks or couldn't share it with the Greeks. I don't know what. And yet, these people, not the Jews, but, but others, maybe the Jews too, were worshipping idols. Why would somebody who, who doesn't believe in God worship other idols? Things that you've made, <clears throat> made with your own hands. It says that the city was full of idols. There was lots of places to worship. And Paul is, is amazed. Like, what is this? And so he starts talking to people. What are you doing? What's going on here? And he tells them about God and about Jesus. When they hear that, they say, well, that's a new religion. We haven't heard about that. That's something new. So now they want to know a little bit more. Actually, Christianity is the oldest religion. The, the the God in the Old Testament, the Creator God, and then Jesus in the New Testament, it's, it's not old, but to them they've never heard. So they think it's a, it's a new religion. <clears throat> so he starts talking about, about God and, uh, <clears throat> and, and very quickly comes to Jesus who died and rose again. Oh, and then they hear about the resurrection. Well, that's not something they want to, they're, they're not, in, they're educated, they know things. People who die don't, don't come to life. It seems to me that if God does not draw us, we do not come to God. We need to pray that God would draw, he will draw, that he has drawn. Thank God that he drew you. Pray that he will draw others. Education itself does not draw people to God. <clears throat> whether we're wealthy or whether we're poor. But when the opportunity is presented and the truth is preached, as it was in Athens, the people rejected that truth. But Paul has done his work. Paul has done what he was called to do. And, and I'm, I'm quite sure he will have been happy that at least a few people came to faith. Not many. In Berea, it says many came to faith. But in Athens, a few came to faith. So sometimes it's many, sometimes it's few. But when the gospel is preached and God draws, something happens. But Paul also knows that those who reject God, once they have been introduced to, uh, to God and reject him, face a righteous judgment. And Jesus will not be their savior. Jesus died for all people. But many people do not want or think that they have need of a savior. But I want to encourage you with what, <clears throat> what, Jesus, what, what is said, what the, uh, the Apostle John says in the Gospel of John. In chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, then you are secure. You've heard, you've been drawn, you've heard, you're secure. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that, that there are still people who are willing to go out, spreading the gospel, preaching, or making a platform where, where the gospel will be presented. 
sometimes to boys and girls, sometimes to, to men and women, sometimes to, to poor people, sometimes to rich people, sometimes to educated people. And when you draw, people come. So help us to continue to reach out. If we're rejected, then we go to another place. But we never quit telling people of, your, of what you did at the cross of Calvary. And that your resurrection is the first one. One day we will all be resurrected. And it's not something to mock. It's something to look forward to. So thank you again. And we pray again for your blessing upon this day. Upon each one who has come. And, uh, and be gracious to us. And we thank you for your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. Please join us as we sing our closing song.
Thank you for coming and sharing and being part of a worship service and being attentive. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen.